You're listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson, the podcast that tells you what it really takes to build a business and the simple steps to get you there. I'm determined to share with you the reality of easy, simple business marketing tips to make passive income so that you can start making money online. Hello and welcome to this week's episode, which is all about how to build an audience of people who will buy from you. We already know that you need to build an audience in order to sell online. And this might come as a shock to some people because I know that there are lots of people out there and I was prey to one of those people that tell you that you don't need an audience online, that actually you can just make something and sell it. And some people say you don't need an audience at all. And some people say you need a tiny audience. And honestly, it just isn't true. And when I thought that, you know, it sounds much better, doesn't it? You don't need an audience. It's hassle building an audience. It feels like it's going to be a lot of work. So actually, if somebody tells you that you don't need an audience at all, you're going to be like in for that. But the only reason they're saying those things I now realize is because it's a much easier sell than to say to somebody, actually, before you sell anything, we're going to need to help you build an audience. It's an easier sell to get them into a program. So I fell for that at the beginning, was trying everything to like sell without an audience. And obviously it doesn't work because you've got nobody to sell to. So it is really important that we build an audience. There is a a kind of numbers game element to it, although numbers on its own isn't enough. Numbers is just one part of it. And if you look at anybody who is in the online industry that you look up to, who you know, are making multi six figures to multi eight figures, you will see that the one thing they all have in common is a large audience, whether that's on an email list, whether that's on a Facebook group, wherever it is, they will have one. There isn't anybody doing that with no audience. So when people tell you that you can, just remember that, (laughs) like, look out, (laughs) ask them where, can you see somebody who has no audience that is making the kind of money you want to make? And that will help you. So what I want to talk about today is a different thing, not how to build an audience, because I think that we all know these days that the sort of ways to build an audience are through having some kind of funnel and being visible and those kind of things. And I think we all kind of know how to do that. We know that it's it can be quite difficult to do that. We know it takes time and we need patience. But what I think is more important than building an audience is building a loyal audience. And that's completely different. Why do you want a loyal audience? You want a loyal audience for a few things. It does so much for you. The first thing it does is it gives you opportunities that you wouldn't ordinarily get if you just had an audience of people just sitting there, not doing anything. This is why you need to nurture an audience to gain a loyal audience. And I'll tell you in a few minutes exactly how you can do that. But it gave me so many opportunities. For instance, there was a person that I really looked up to as soon as I started in business who I'd read all of her books and you know I really looked up to her I wanted to be a bit like her like she really inspired me and you know she's kind of famous in our industry insta famous I like to call it and so there was no way ordinarily that I could just like go hi let's meet up for a coffee but what ended up happening within the first year and a half of my business I ended up standing on a stage with her as a peer on the same conference. And how that happened was somebody who I didn't know at the time had a Facebook group and asked in the Facebook group, you know, I'm looking for somebody that's down to earth, that's making a decent amount of money, that has a backstory. And lots and lots of my audience happened to be in her group and started putting my name forward so many times that she couldn't ignore it. There were all these famous people that people were saying you should get in touch with, you know, industry famous people. I never think in this industry where the people are are actually famous (laughs) is industry famous people. And people were saying, talk to this person, talk to this really, you know, well-known person, they would be able to do it. But so many people put my name forward and I was completely unknown that she got in touch. Um, She got in touch with me and she said, look, I haven't heard of you, but your entire audience seems to think that you should be on stage at this conference that I'm doing. So I wanted to have a chat with you. And we had a chat and she really liked me. And I ended up on that stage. Now, 
that would not have happened if I just had a normal audience. That was because I had a loyal audience that rooted for me, that wanted to see me do well, that was grateful for the help that I'd given them for free. And so that got me on that stage, which then opened opportunities to lots of other things. Other things that it can do for you. If you have a loyal audience, it can help when you need people to stick up for your character, even if you don't know about it at the time. And I faced this in my very first year in business when, let's be honest, I did quite well in the first year. I didn't know that at the time, but when I look back now, I see without braggy being like braggy, I see that I did okay. I was making 220,000 pounds in the first year of business. And because of that, I had quite a lot of peers, competitors, I don't know what you call them, decided they did not like that. And so online, I used to get quite a lot of stick, especially as I talk about money really openly. I always have done because I think it's important to But yeah, I used to get some stick, people saying, oh, you know, we've seen people like her before. They come in, they won't last, they disappear again. She's making money too quickly, blah, blah, blah. So I was okay at ignoring all of this stuff. But I also was very, very aware that there was conversations in Facebook groups going on about me constantly. And I would try not to be in many Facebook groups because I didn't want to see them because nobody wants to see that, do they? But there was this one time when my Forbes article came out and people were sharing it everywhere for me. My audience who are amazing people just wanted to share it and were telling people, hey, my coach has been in Forbes, like go and have a look because they knew that if the views went up on the Forbes article, Forbes might put it on the front, you know, Forbes might show it to more people. And so they were sharing it in the groups that they were in. And in one particular group that I'd never been in, I didn't know the person that ran it, I'd never spoken to her, somebody shared it and she took it down. The the owner of this group took it down and instead she posted the reasons why she had removed it. And the reason was that she had heard negative things about me from other people, from my competitors in the industry, and that she would never endorse anybody in there. There were 3,000 people in there working with me at any time because of what she had heard. This could have been so detrimental to my business because this was 3,000 of my ideal clients hearing from someone they looked up to that I wasn't to be trusted, that I was a con artist of some kind because somebody had told her that. And, you know, the group was about women supporting women, which always makes me laugh when people do things like this. And it could have been awful because I wasn't in there, so I couldn't defend myself, I couldn't do anything. But what actually happened, it turned out to be one of the best things that happened to me in the first year of my business, because what actually happened was my audience were in there. Some of my audience were. And over 100 of my audience stepped up and said, this isn't fair. You don't you've admitted you've never spoke to this person. You've never met this person. And yet you're telling everybody here that she shouldn't work with her when we have worked with her and we've made lots of money because of it, or we really liked her or just I'm in her group and she's a nice person or any of these things. And so because so many people stuck their neck out for me in there because they were a loyal audience, what ended up happening is that all of these new people came over to my audience and said, we don't like that this person did this without ever speaking to you. So now we want to come and find out a bit more about you because we hadn't heard of you before. And I made probably about £40,000 on the back of what that woman said because her audience came over to me. But the hundred or so people who were in my loyal audience who stuck their neck out all got blocked. And even while they were doing it, they could see that other people were being blocked from that group, were being chucked out of that group. And they were still willing to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. This isn't fair on Lisa, even though they knew they were going to get thrown out. Now, a normal audience, just an audience that you've built would never do that. They would not want to stick their neck out because, you know, it's detrimental to them. What do they get out of it? But a loyal audience will, they will be on your side. They will have your back because you've had theirs. So that's how it helps as well, because you can't be everywhere at once. The other way that it really helped me is it saved me a ton of money in advertising because 
although I had tried to spend money on Facebook ads up until the seven figure mark, I never really did. Because every time we tried to use Facebook ads at six figures, at multi six figures, it didn't really work because we were using words like passive and we were using words like money and recurring revenue and income. Facebook didn't like it. So they kept shutting down my accounts. They would, every time I did an ad, would spend about four pounds and then close off the ad and say, no, this is a scam. You're not allowed to, to use it. They kept thinking I was an MLM for some reason because of the wording I was using and they don't allow that. So we never really were able to use ads in any meaningful way until at seven figures, I, I thought, you know what, I need to give this an actual go. But before that, the reason I didn't need to is because every time I put a post out about any of my offers, whether it was a course or whether it was a, one of the programs I was doing, my audience would jump on it to help the engagement on it. So they would jump on it and say, hey, I've done this. It's, it was a really good course. They would share it with people. You know, there would be lots and lots of engagement on each post. And because of that, it meant it would go further because of the algorithm and I wouldn't need to pay for any kind of ad cost. So having that loyal audience that is there for you, there to help you, you know, to, they want you to do well. They're always going to do things that doesn't take them much time, but they know that it has a really good effect on your business and they wanted to help my business go further. So it can really help you in that way. And that can save you lots of money. That's a real tangible thing. Also remember that when you're selling anything, it costs more to find a new client than it does to sell to an existing client. It's always going to cost you a lot less to sell to an existing client. So what you want is a, a long-term sustainable business where you sell more things to one person. If you don't have a loyal audience, if you just have a regular audience that you've built and to you it's just like numbers and there's nothing else in it. And I've seen this happen to peers out there who don't have a loyal audience. They just have an audience that want them to solve their problem. They'll sell them a course and that will be it. They will never be able to then sell to them again and again and again because they've got what they wanted and so off they go. If you have a loyal audience who really like know, like and trust you and feel that they're seeing all parts of you, then you will be able to sell to them more than once. You will be able to find out what they need because they will tell you and then you'll be able to create it so that you can sell more than one product to your audience which is always, that's the holy grail. That's what you need. You don't want an audience that you have to keep finding new audiences every single time you sell something. So we know, you know, why you want a look to grow a loyal audience who will buy from you. It's really important. But how do you do that? Like, what are the ways to grow a loyal audience rather than just an audience? Well, I think there are three things that have a big impact. The first one is to take your audience on the journey with you. Like my audience started when I started. They were there when I started right at the beginning. There was only a few of them. You know, everybody starts the same way with an audience. There's no one there. You know, you might be talking to your mum. You might be talking to a couple of friends. But everybody starts the same way with not having a load of people there hanging on your every word. But those people that start in the beginning, and they're listening to you in the beginning when you turn up on lives or when you're writing them emails, they become your biggest cheerleaders because they were there right from the start. So take them on a journey. And that, what that means is not pretending that you're further along than you are, like showing them you building your business as you're building your business and being real when you mess up with things. We all make mistakes in business and people don't trust people that have everything sorted <laughs> because that everyone knows that isn't true, that everyone is trying to get the shit together, you know, nobody has it sorted. So in the beginning, in that first year, when so many things went wrong in business, you know, I lost 27,000 pounds trying to work out how to use Facebook ads by hiring an ad manager that maybe wasn't as good as I thought she was going to be. You know, I, I hired a coach who turned out to be a bully. It was a nightmare. All of those things I talked to my audience about. I didn't just tell them the, the great wins, the financial wins that I'd got in magazines and Forbes and those kind of things. I told them the bad things that happened as well, because for people to be able to trust you, they need to know that you are being real with them. You are being open with them. You're not just showing what's perfect out there. 
So that's what I did. And, and it worked really well. Like when I messed up, I told them I'd messed up. Just don't be something that you're not, I suppose. And, and take them with you on the things that happen because they can learn from your mistakes. They can learn from all the things that you're showing them you did. You know, I definitely know that my audience do a lot more due diligence on the people they hire than I did in that first year because of the things that I've told them that I did wrong. The second thing is to make your messaging more than just about the one thing that you do. Like if you look at the people out there that you follow, that you really trust and you feel like you know really well, they don't just talk about they're a business coach or they're a personal trainer or whatever they are. You know a bit more about them, about the things they really care about. I always think of people like Jenna Kutcher who talk about, you know, we know her for being a business coach, but actually we know her a lot more because of her interests in family, because of what she went through when she had, you know, miscarriages. The things that people really fight for, stand for, the movements that they create, they're the things that you remember about people and they're the things that you're going to resonate. So with me, yes, I talk about passive income. That's my main kind of message. But my other message is anti-bullying. So whenever I talk about anything, you'll hear me talk about bullying in some way, whether it's how we can stop it, whether it's what happened to me and, and how I went through it as a teenager, whether it's the partners that I support now, the anti-bullying charities. It's really important to me. I talk about bullying online as an adult because that happened to me too. And it happens to so many entrepreneurs that they feel bullied online when other people troll them. And so that's something that I'm known for. The other thing that I talk about a lot is dispelling the the bullshit basically in this industry. There's a lot about this industry, as you'll have heard in other episodes, that I don't like and that I'm not on board with, things that don't feel very ethical to me. And so I am somebody that talks about integrity a lot and I try and show it as much as I talk about it. And I'm known for that. Newspapers contact me when something happens. Something happened in the industry last year where I think there were 20 people taking a coach to court for mis-selling. And they came to me, the newspapers came to me and said, we hear you're the person that always talks about integrity in the online industry. Can we get your take on this? So, you know, you become known for something. And if there are other people that have been bullied online, other people that feel like the integrity isn't there and they feel a bit weird being in this industry, they often come to work with me because they resonate with what I'm talking about. And I'm sure that with with Jenna, so many people resonate with her story and the losses that she went through and the happiness that she now has, that's why, you know, they could go to any business coach, but they feel pulled towards her. And if you think about anybody that you work with or you want to work with, there'll be some part of what they're like or their story that you resonate with. And that's why you want to work with them. So with yourself, when you're trying to grow a loyal audience, don't just think, right, I'm going to talk a lot about the thing that I can help them with, you know, the solution that you have to their problem. Instead, Talk about things that you really care about, things that you want to fight for, you want things to change, things that have happened to you that has made you have a perspective on something that can really help other people. It goes a long, long way. So, you know, make your messaging more than just about what you do. You're not a two dimensional person. There are many parts to you, there are many layers to you. So be a bit vulnerable and open up about those layers. And the third thing, and the thing that I think when you're building a loyal audience, this is probably the most important thing. And it's the thing that most people don't do well is you need to be consistent. If consistent in a few ways, if you're one of those people that chop and change, you know, you have your title of what you do, you know who your ideal client is. And then 10 minutes later, you've decided actually it's something else. You've seen someone else doing something that you like a bit better or you chop and change again and and you're doing the same thing, but you change your title then people will get confused. And if people get confused, they won't feel loyal to you because they won't know what you do. So they won't know if you're for them because you've changed your ideal client too many times. The other kind of consistency is to be consistent in showing up. And I know that that's the hardest thing to do, but even when you're not feeling like it, you're going to have to show up. I always think about people who constantly say to me, but I didn't feel energetically aligned to go into my Facebook group last week at all 
And I think you're your own boss now. Like this is who you are. You are your boss. No one's going to make you do anything. If you were at work and you had a boss and you said to your boss, I'm really sorry, but I didn't do the filing because I just didn't feel energetically aligned to doing it. You wouldn't last very long in that job. And now you're your own boss. So you have to get rid of this stuff that you're telling yourself. Like if you don't want to do something, you don't want to show up. Being your own boss means you have to make yourself do it. It's never as bad as you think it's going to be. Yeah, there have been times when I'm I'm in my Facebook group and I think, especially in that first six months when I went live every single day, that I thought, God, I, I could really do with not doing this today. I want to go out with my mates. <laughs> but it's two minutes. So even if I showed up for two minutes while I was walking on my way to the train station to go meet my mates, I would still do it. I would still show up. And so that consistency is really important, especially because the Facebook algorithm is going to really bugger about with you if you disappear for two or three weeks and then try and come back. And it's definitely the same with email marketing. If you haven't got a Facebook group and the way that you're nurturing your loyal audience is on email, and if you email and you then don't email for ages because you can't be bothered, and then when you want to launch something, you suddenly email, it's not going to work. You're going to be that person that like walks up to somebody in a bar and tells them to come home with them on the first night. And you haven't even like chatted to them for a few weeks beforehand each time they've been in the bar. And no one wants that. Like it's important that you nurture your audience in between the things you're doing and and actually take an interest in them, actually care about what they're doing, ask them and tell them about what you're doing at the in-between stages, because that's where they can learn as well. So this consistency is really, really important. I've had clients that, you know, they've not done well at selling and then they've got consistent and just within three months, everything's changed because they've been so consistent at showing up to their audience. And I suppose the best way to end this podcast episode is to tell you that to gain a loyal audience who will buy from you you must be loyal too this isn't a one-way street you know you have to go above and beyond you can never ever see your audience as numbers if you see them as numbers you will only ever grow an audience you'll never grow a loyal audience because you won't care about them as people you've got to remember that every single person in your audience is like you in somebody else's audience They're real people with real problems. And you must always treat people in your audience how you would want to be treated. Think about you being in somebody's audience right now. Like, what would you like for them to be like? Would you like for them to think of you as just a number, as just part of an audience? Or would you like them to see you as a person with real problems that they want to help you with? I know which I'd prefer. And so right from the beginning, I always wanted to see my audience as people and not really care too much about how many are in there, but more about who they were and whether I resonated with them. So to gain a loyal audience, you have to be loyal back. I'm going to leave that with you. Thank you for listening today, and I will speak to you really soon. Thank you for listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson. If you'd like to get hold of my guide to launching, go to lisajohnson.com forward slash launch, and let's get you making money online.